fire is powerful. It evokes both blessing and danger, the blessing of a hearth, the ability to have warmth and light, to provide a hot meal for ourselves and our family, and to ward off the darkness and whatever might be lurking there. But fire is also a danger, and we use its power respectfully, always aware of the limits of our ability to control it. Fire shows up in many places in scripture, including the story of Pentecost. As the disciples were gathered, suddenly that great wind blew through the house and a tongue of fire appeared above each of the disciples, a brightly burning sign of the Spirit's presence within them. That tongue of flame was the outward sign of the loosing of each disciple's tongue to speak the languages of the diaspora Jews gathered once again in Jerusalem for the Pentecost festival. Those glowing tongues of fire and spirit began to heal the divisions created by the fragmentation of the human race at the Tower of Babel and the fragmentation of the Jewish people into neighboring lands and beyond. No longer were these people divided by their inability to understand one another's languages. Notice, though, that the Spirit doesn't erase these differences. Those gathered people don't all speak the same one language. Instead, the Spirit creates unity and understanding that transcends these differences. Brokenness is healed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. In Japan, there's a beautiful tradition of restoring broken pottery, a broken cup or bowl, for example, using gold. This act of restoration and creation is called kintsugi. First, each broken piece is carefully found and picked up, and any ceramic dust at its edges is carefully brushed away. Then the kintsugi artist mixes a glue made from a resin harvested from tree sap and carefully restores each piece to its neighbor. And finally, the artist create, uh, traces a fine vein of gold over every line where the cup or bowl had been broken, both completing the repair and emphasizing the scars that this piece bears. Kintsugi ceramics are not considered to have less value than an unbroken piece. Instead, they're considered to have more because this bowl or cup now has a story a story that can be read in the beautiful gold lines traced along its surface. Those gathered Jews from so many different nations were brought back together into one by the power of the fire of the spirit that was poured out at Pentecost. One vessel ready to receive the good news of Christ Jesus. Those jagged raw edges that we so often try to hide from others those are the very lines that God uses to create connections with our neighbor. Those broken places in our lives become a means by which the Holy Spirit forges a connection point with others who need to hear the good news of Christ Jesus and of God's work in the world. You may have heard that most people who enter a church building do so for the first time because they're experiencing some kind of crisis in their lives and they're looking for help. When they do, they are so much more likely to feel seen and heard by God and to sense God's presence if those they talk to are willing to open up and share about their own struggles and about how God is helping them through those struggles. I know that God can help us make these types of connections even in this time during which many of our church buildings are closed and we're learning to be church outside of the church walls. But remember, your cracks, your brokenness, those are ways in which God brings others in to communities of faith and of care. So don't be afraid to let your broken edges show. God promises that God's strength is made perfect in your weakness just as the flame of gold makes whole and beautiful 
even a broken bowl. Amen.